as the fuel falls off the main rising belt, it is continuously sampled and after each rake is bunkered, a sample is removed and stored in a sealed bag for analysis by the lab technician. These tests are used to determine the moisture content of the fuel, how much heat it contains and how much ash will remain after the fuel is burned. The moisture and ash contents of the piece determine the rate of payment to Bordnemona. At the bottom of each bunker cell a feeder is positioned. This motor driven device is similar to the belts we have seen before, except they are made of steel. The feeder carries the fuel from the bottom of the bunker cell to the fuel chute which channels the fuel down into the mill. On its way down to the mill, hot gases which are drawn from the top of the boiler are mixed with the fuel, thereby raising its temperature in preparation for burning in the furnace. There are four feeders on each boiler, each feeding its own separate mill. Normally, full load is achieved with three mills in service, which allows normal maintenance and repair work to be carried out on the fourth. Let us now look at the internals of a mill and how it operates. Mill. There are three basic functions of a mill. One is to grind the turf for combustion, two is to dry the turf, and three is to force the turf into the boiler. The basic sections of the mill are the hammer chamber, this is where the grinding of the turf is done, and the fan chamber, this is what creates the suction on this side to dry the turf using hot gas from further up the boiler, and is then used to force the turf into the boiler up to the top here. The air supply which is necessary for combustion is provided by the force draft fan. Warm air from the top of the building is drawn by the fan and the output from the fan is passed over a thousand tubes which are situated in the gas pad. In this way the hot gases heat the air to approximately 360 degrees. The air is fed into the furnace adjacent to the fuel. We are now ready to start the combustion process. It takes around three hours to gradually get the furnace into full production. Initially we use oil. The oil is stored in these two tanks adjacent to the station. Each boiler is fitted with two oil burners. When the boiler temperature has been raised sufficiently, the mills are gradually brought into service. When the boiler is in full production, it produces steam, it produces ash, it produces gases. The most important of these is the steam, but the ash and the gases must also be disposed of. Let us first look at the disposal of the gases. These gases are drawn out of the boiler by the induced draft fan. On the way out to the fan, they pass over the air heaters and the economizer which reduces their temperature. Before they reach the fan they are passed through the grit extractor which removes all the fine particles of grit and ash. The gases are then forced up and out the top of the stack into the atmosphere where they are dispersed.
The ash which is produced is directed into the ashing lines, which are channels containing a continuous flow of water. When the ash falls into these channels, it is washed down to the ash pump house. From here it is pumped to a settling pond where it is held. The area of the boiler where the combustion is taking place is completely covered by tubes containing water. This water is changed into steam during the combustion process. The central section here is the steam turbine with the electrical generators at each side. Before we complete the generation cycle, let us now look at the steam after it has passed through the steam turbine. When the steam passes through the turbine, it enters the condenser. In the condenser, the steam is changed back into water and pumped back into the system. The cold water for the condenser is supplied from the well of the cooling tower. The cooling tower is visually the most striking aspect of the site and it plays a very important role in the operation of the station. The water is piped into the building and passed through the condenser by the cooling water pumps. As it passes through the condenser tubes, it cools the steam, changing it to water, and in the process its temperature is raised by 6 degrees. The warm water is piped through the ring of the cooling tower. From the ring it is piped towards the centre of the tower by these pipes. A series of spray heads are attached to each pipe. In this way the water is divided up and made to fall like rain. Because of the shape of the tower Cold air is drawn in at the bottom and passed up through the droplets of warm water. This cools the water and when it falls back into the well of the tower, it is ready for reuse in the cooling process. The steam is piped across to the steam turbine and the passage of the steam through the turbine causes it to rotate. Coupled to the turbine is the electrical generator and the rotation of the generator gives the electrical output. The turbo generator unit has to be run up prior to loading the generator electrically. This operation is carried out by the turbine driver. It generally takes 15 to 20 minutes and when 3000 revs per minute have been reached, the control is handed over to the electrical controller. The operator adjusts the speed and voltage of the machine so that it matches the system exactly. And by using the synchroscope, he joins the machine to the system by, a close, by closing its associated switch. The machine is then said to be on load and is now supplying load to the ESB network. To increase the load, more fuel is supplied to the boiler, which produces more steam. Consequently, more electrical output is achieved. The electrical output from the machine, which is at 10,500 volts, is fed into a transformer, which increases its voltage to 110,000 volts. It is then fed into the national grid for distribution. We have two 110,000 volt power lines leaving the station, one going to Castlebar and the other to Moy.
From these and other distribution stations around the country, the power is fed to the consumer. We hope this video has been of some assistance in helping you to understand how electricity is generated from mill peat, from mill peat and we hope you enjoyed your visit to Bellacoric Generating Station.